The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Okay, welcome back, folks. Apologize for the technical difficulties. We kick things off and we got the S&Ps right now. 9, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 20 minutes to go until the opening bell flat, trading at 41.57. We have the NASDAQ 100 up by four points. We got the Dow negative by 22, the Russell negative by one. We come into a pretty big week of tech earnings. Uh, Google and Microsoft tomorrow, I believe. Meta on Wednesday, Thursday, Intel, Snap, Amazon. We got Microsoft, uh, Apple next week to follow. We get a Fed meeting coming up May 3rd, right? How fast is that? Yeah, that's a week from Wednesday. I had to pull it up. I mean, just so quick in terms of things are accelerating. A week from Wednesday, May 3rd. And we got Apple earnings May 4th. Our man Basil Chapman has announced a webinar he'll be doing on May 3rd. 90-minute subscriber webinar. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. I'm sure Basil will talk about it this morning coming up at 10 a.m. But this morning, we kick things off right where we were. Now, the interesting part. Things were getting a little dicey last night. Two, three in the morning, right at the market lows in terms of where you were at about 11 a.m. Eastern time. That was some serious volatility early in the session on Friday. You wouldn't know it from the VIX, though, folks, right? The VIX, yeah, things were looking a little bit more expensive in the pre-market when you had the S&Ps down about 20 this morning. We're going to see an elevated level. We had a 16 handle. We've had a 16 handle, folks. Check it out. We had it every day last week, a 16 handle every day last week. Made it into there on, no, excuse me. It was Tuesday. Is that right? Yeah, Tuesday. I get lost. The 17th? Yeah, every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Had a 16 handle. We kicked things off this morning. We're trading at 1735 in the VIX. Bitcoin. Got a story in Bitcoin out there. Quite a pullback from 30590 to 27485 You're positive on the session, but you see the trend, not your friend right now in Bitcoin. We jump over to crude, pushing some of the lows that we had on Friday. Crude just dips below 77 bucks for a moment within the last half hour or so. We're trading right now at 77.28. Gold contract with some action this morning. We have some dollar action this morning as well. Gold up by $4. Let's jump over to the dollar index. You're seeing dollar weakness, 104.80, excuse me, 101.48. As we have the dollar index off about 34 pennies, trading at 101.48. And that ties in to jump over to the 10-year. We're positive by 11 ticks. So what do we have? We have a weaker dollar. We have lower yields. We have the market clawing back some of the losses that it had pre-market. And we come into, like I said, a pretty big week of earnings. Microsoft and Google on Tuesday after the bell. Microsoft down about a buck fifty, almost two dollars actually in the pre-market. Microsoft shares. We jump over to Google shares. Whoops, G O O G. Slightly in the positive. We get Meta on Wednesday. Meta shares basically flat this morning, two thirteen ten, and then we get Amazon on Thursday. Let's check that out. Yeah, quite the run last week for Amazon, right? You were trading it. 101 early in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday. And over the course of three days, you accelerate from about 101 up to a price point of almost 108. End of the week at about 107. You're positive again. Jump over to the Analyze tab. And yes, they are out with their numbers on Thursday. And we also get Snapchat, I believe, out with their numbers on Thursday, April 27. We get Intel on a big day on Thursday as well. Intel this morning. Yeah, basically flat. It's been quite a pullback for them. Snapchat's its own animal, man. If you remember last earnings season, right? Yeah, it was two earnings seasons ago, I guess, than when they would really dropped out of bed. Time flies, man. That was six months ago. I mean, I guess it was every earnings event going on. This thing's been in a free fall going back. You've just been shopping around at $10. So we get some big tech earnings, man, and then let's see how Apple's doing this. They're going to be May 4th. Now, Apple, I've been talking about this channel line, man. Keep your eye on it. Critical area for Apple nice trend line to the upside. You could draw a pretty parallel line to the downside in terms of the lows. And you're talking about a trading range of basically 40 points, a channel that is 40 points wide. Apple pushing the highs of that channel at 
64.63 this morning. Uh, we'll come back, folks. We had a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at the markets. We'll take a look at some of those equities out with their earnings. The tech companies coming up this week. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by one point right now. Market slightly in the red when you take a look and jump on over to Bitcoin. So longer term chart on Bitcoin. We bottom out at just under about 15,000 or so. I think that's when everything imploded. November FTX imploding. And just like that, you're almost 50 percent above where you were when that Ponzi scheme was revealed, which is absolutely remarkable. And jumping over to the Bitcoin story. So this one is interesting from just a supply and demand and production perspective. So Bitcoin is going to have next year. And that is of pushing the bulls to say that they got higher prices coming at you. Now, having is a quadrennial process of curbing supply of new tokens. And basically what it does is it cuts in half the amount of tokens that Bitcoin miners receive as a reward for their work. It happens next, a year from right now. And when you think what that's going to do, right, it, the, the supply is always capped at 21 million. It's going to become more and more difficult to even bring that total higher to create coins at all. I thought it was worth mentioning because they've talked about that this has really driven things higher the last three times I believe that's happened. Yeah, the coin has hit records after each of the last three halvings. And check out where the halvings are 
on the cycle. So it's happening every four years, okay? And you go back to where it was 2012, you go back to where it was 2016, you go back to where it was, and it seems like it's just part of the process, and then you get an acceleration following that halving as maybe supply dries up, prices rise, as supply is not what it was prior to that halving. And no matter what they do, as of now, the rules can always change in Bitcoin. And when I first opened this up, because I'm not familiar with Bitcoin as much, I said, are they changing the rules? Are they going to have it? Are there going to be 42 million tokens now? No, not the case. Uh, 21 million tokens is the supply, and that's what it will be forever as of now, unless the rules change. Um, yeah, but worth mentioning for Bitcoin as you back off a bit, but a year from now that occurs. And I imagine that is a fundamental influence in that market, especially Bitcoin. When you think about that, if you're mining something in March of next year, you're getting X dollars because you're getting X coins tied to the mining. And boom, just like that in April, it's worth half as much as it was in March. Think about the computing power that takes place and how instantly you're getting paid half of what you were on the top line. And then you got to expense everything out, but you're only making half of what you were. It's going to slow down a lot of people from any more of those being created. All right, what else do we got? Let's talk a little bit of bigger picture. Talking Morgan Stanley. Stock index is traded unusually well into the earnings season. We're, what, nine days out from an expected Fed hike again on, earning, on the earnings front. Things could be volatile with the tech companies at least. And the S&P rallied more than 6% in the final three weeks of March, in contrast to the sell-offs that have led up to the previous three sell-offs that have led up to the previous three reporting seasons. Seasons, yeah, and that's cause for concern to Wilson, who we've talked about over there at Morgan Stanley, man. He's been on it for a while. And this chart always pops up, which is interesting. In terms of, in the red, you have blended forward earnings per share. Okay, we've seen some revisions. But if you get those revisions further, it would seem like the market has steadied, where in reality, it usually follows on a slightly delayed basis, right? They'll push their forward earnings lower or higher. The market will adjust accordingly. You did get the decline, and we saw the first decline. But we're into earnings season now. And if that continues, okay, you could see a real hit there in terms of the prices. Historically, when forward earnings per share growth goes negative as it is today, and the Fed is cutting rates, not hiking. Yeah, I think I said hiking earlier. No. Oh, that's it. Yeah. The Fed is cutting rates, not hiking, right? Earnings per share in the forward is going down, and we have the Fed that is still hiking. However, we're dealing with generational inflation, basically making this cycle a historical anomaly in this respect, ultimately a near-term headwind for equities in our view until an easing cycle begins. Now, what I was thinking about bigger picture last night, right? is that you now have all this money that's gonna be in money markets, that's gonna be in CDs, that's gonna be in fixed income because you're earning a real return. That's gonna be a headwind for the market for some time. These banks are gonna be facing pressure to pull in deposits. They're gonna to have to pay for those deposits. That's gonna be a friendly environment for CDs, for banks seeking that capital, okay? But when we get over this hump, we are gonna have the coffers full again in terms of there is gonna be a lot of cash if yields were to come down and there to be stimulus put in place to potentially come back and buy equities. I don't think that's happening even close yet, but it is interesting to think about how right now it is such easy money when you have a risk-free rate of return of between four and 5%, man, you ladder up some CDs, okay? You're pushing four to 5%. I'll pull them up later in the program, which is remarkable when you think about risk-free. You push a three-year ladder, the stock's got to go up 15% to make risk-free what you would make in that environment. What is 15%? We got to revisit new highs of 4,800 in the S&P. Is that 650? Yeah, within the next three years. Okay, and listen, I, I get it. We could be there in a year. That's the thing. You have an opportunity cost potentially with a real-world cost, okay? But if the market makes it to new highs in the next two to three years, you basically could have gotten the same return for a CD risking nothing. That's a comparable, man, that you wanna take a look at. Now, when that conversation shifts, and it's only gonna shift when CD rates go back down, okay, or when the risk-free rate of return, when yields go back down, because they are correlated, CD rates can't get too out of whack because banks will just lose money. They can't pay that much money more than what they might be able to make. But there's gonna be pressure, and they're gonna have to pay a lot more than they've been used to for some time 
But if things get dire, rates get brought back down, you see those decrease, that risk-free rate of return is no longer there. Because right now, when I look at that, that you can get 4 to 5% on a two to three year, and you're talking about being equivalent to market being back at highs of 4,800 in the next year or two. Risk reward wise, depending on where you are on the spectrum, and I know I'm talking longer term, I'm talking macro economy, but there's nothing, nothing like risk free return, folks. And when you start dealing with big numbers, man, and you start talking about you can be back to 4,800 in the same essence over the next two or three years, that doesn't seem like that bad of a deal. Yeah, you might be higher. Those are the risks that you take. But that is a headwind for some time. And if the Fed ever really comes back in and they cut and all of that free, risk-free rate of return goes away, it's going to accelerate even further on the other side. And that's what the Fed is aware of, which is why I think they will really wait in this market to cut because they're now at a level that they're going to have some real impact, right? What we talked about so often, what many talked about, when they cut to zero for so long, was that if anything happened, when things were actually pretty good in the stock market, we had you know a bull market from 2008. Think about that, right? Stocks have been in a bull since 2008, and rates have been stuck at zero. Part of the argument there was if you ever get in trouble, you're not going to have enough ammunition to really roll out some big cuts and influence the economy because it's still so low. Well, they're going to have it now, man. They're going to have it now in a big way. They're going to be able to cut in a big way. And things are so drastic on one end with a risk-free rate of return being almost 5% that when that gets sucked back down, all that money that's been pulled out of banks to put in that, right, it's going to go somewhere because they're not going to accept 0 to 1%. And some of it will go back in the market. And the Fed knows that. They know they have a lot of ammunition on the other side. So I imagine they're going to wait. They're going to hike. And they're really going to wait to see inflation get knocked down. I was having conversations in my house last night saying inflation seven. Well, it's really 20%. Well, it's 20% over three years. That's bonkers, right? We'll finish this up because you let inflation go five or six years, man. You're done. You lost 50% of what you had. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got an S&P basically flat right now. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red. The Dow up by three points. Russell negative by two points right now. we got the tenure up here. Positive by eight ticks. I have this up on a weekly chart just to illustrate. I mean, you talk about an acceleration, right? Let's back it up even further. August of 2020, you're trading at 140. Absolutely remarkable, right? They cut rates to, to zero. Everyone's talking about negative across the globe. Come into 2021, things a little bit better than that. Inflation begins to roar. March comes around. We were still at 128 as the Fed began their hiking schedule, and we did not imagine that we would be coming in to April of the following year, and they would still be hiking and would still be getting inflation figures pushing 5 6 7%. Just to finish up that conversation, as to why I think you should really consider the risk reward for the Fed and Chairman Powell. You know, the numbers don't lie and then inflation is five, six, seven percent. Okay. But we are deep in inflation, man. We're two to borderline almost three years into numbers accelerating for inflation. And you only have to push five to seven percent two or three times. Procter and Gamble. All right. I kept this article up. Why not? This is a perfect segue. I didn't even plan on it. Kept this article up from Friday because it's worth reiterating. They raised their prices by 10% and they had done it the prior year, 20%. So that's where people talk about and that's compounded. Okay, so add another percent. You're talking about 21% ballpark. So that's where people say these numbers come out five, six, seven percent, man. But I feel like I'm paying 20, 25% more. It's because you are. They're both right. Okay, time flies especially during COVID over the last few years, it seems like years have just blended together, especially the first couple of years in COVID, life back to normal. But, you know, when you wake up, everybody's at home, you do the same thing, you're not doing things that differentiate. Time really accelerates, I feel like, because then you can't differentiate days when they're all kind of the same. 20, 25%. That's the only reason the Procter & Gamble is doing well, is that not because they're selling more products, because they're just make, pe making people pay 21% more than they were paying two years ago, right? So back to the Fed. They know this. If inflation goes on for a couple more years, you're talking about almost a 40% push. Procter & Gamble just did 20% in two years. <clears throat> if you don't get that under control, you're talking about 40%. You're talking about decimating savers, retirees. You're talking about decimating people living on a fixed uh, paycheck, right? Living check to check, where most of their money is spent on consumer items, whether it's laundry, household items, food, etc. So we go back to the Fed. I imagine the Fed is going to make sure that they try and get this under control outside of some type of event occurring, which is always there. All right. That's almost almost like the disclaimer of anything could happen. But they're going to have a lot of ammunition to cut, cut, cut if they need to. And I think the only argument you can make as to why rates are where they are versus where the Fed says they think they're going to be is not because they're going to come in on a gradual cutting cycle because they're somewhat sure things are going to be OK. I think the market, this would be my bet or wager I'd make in terms of if you thought that was going to happen is that it might happen on an accelerated basis because things get too dire too quick, right? They say, okay, we're at five and a half, man. Maybe the economy's pushed back down to two, two to three percent. So anywhere above two to three percent is still going to be restrictive. And the economy is 
just clamping up, tightening up across the board. Things are accelerating in a way that they were waiting for or maybe a little bit more than they were waiting for. They could cut by 50. They could cut by 75. They could cut by a full point if if a banking crisis was back on the table or something like that. That could, could happen. But they're going to wait for it, man, because if they don't wait for it, the harm to society and the economy, which I think we haven't seen in some time, so many of people are unaware and they're finding out real quick in the last year or two because all anybody's talking about, justifiably so, is that you wait a few years. And it, I just thought it was really interesting, the conversation where you're right, inflation is up 20 to 25 percent. But that's taken two to three years. That's just illustrative of what can happen if it doesn't get crushed in the next year or two because you're compounding, right? So if you go up 10 percent and 10 percent again and you're already up 25 percent, yeah, you're at, you're at like 50%. That's it. A bill was 100 bucks, it's 150. Over four or five years, that'll put a lot of people in a lot of pain, folks, and clamp this economy up big time. And not to mention savers, retirees, people who can't afford it most, living on fixed income, living on pensions, uh, annuities, all that stuff, max pain situation. So we got a Fed meeting in nine days. I thought it was interesting there. But what it tied me into that one? Here you go. Hedge funds place biggest ever short on benchmark treasuries. How about it? Leverage funds may expect sticky inflation. U.S. yields rose in April after recording a monthly drop in March, and they're betting on higher treasury yields in a market that's divided Yeah, over whether the economy can avoid a recession and the Fed interest rate cuts. Recent positioning suggests leveraged investors are about as confident as the central bank is that a slump... What is written there? that a slump be dodged, it's quite the sentence, even as the past year's inflation fighting policy tightens, tightening bites on activity. And I would agree, you know, outside of an event, which is why I brought it up, hedge funds may be thinking that inflation will be stickier than many markets are currently expecting. Okay, on the face of it, this big short doesn't reflect the view that there will be a near-term recession, because obviously you get some big-term recessions, right? That's where the Fed may come in and they may start cutting and you may have to be there. But it's gonna be about inflation. We have unemployment that's still almost near a record low, right? We get initial jobless claims every week that are pushing 240, 230, almost the number you get in a healthy economy. Things need to shift dramatically to get back to 2%, folks. So it's fanciful, I think. Yeah, not everyone in the market's convinced. You got swaps going on there as well. Uh, but you look at the data. We'll blow this up, okay? This is leveraged funds in the gray here. Net long short position on 10 year treasury futures, and that is as of 4.1823. Look at that acceleration, man. Now, what's crazy is where that shifted and where that number went in terms of the, the yield, where we are, right? Well, for what it's worth, we get to find out a lot more in about nine days from right now on the Fed. And that's a perfect segue, folks, because the Fed Day is May 3rd. And head on over to the front page of TFNN. Our man Basil Chapman has just announced a subscriber webinar that night. 90-minute webinar. Basil will be talking about it in his program. Wednesday, May 3rd, 4 till 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The webinar is going to be called Sectors, Stocks, and Chapman Wave Techniques to Focus on for the Coming Months. He's got some great topics in here, okay? He's going to talk about which stocks and sectors worked in the first quarter but could now stall and which are ready to break. So he's looking at specific stocks, specific sectors using his Chapman Wave technology um, methodology. Excuse me. Can this rotational market finally see the tech sector lead a sustained move to the upside? It's been quite a move, but we're coming into a big week this week. What technical aspects of the Chapman Wave suggest strength will continue this year? Are the techniques applicable to the short-term analysis just as helpful in the long term? Talking about dividend stocks that can rise, low pro st price stocks. Check it out on the front page, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We have a horizontal line correlating to the S&Ps, trading over to about 4180 is that price point. Now, we were back up there in February, and we just kind of rolled back to that area again. We have a daily chart up here, okay, and you first touched that area in the S&P April 12th, and then you can make the case that we traded away from that April 19th. A week later, you traded lower on a big day on Thursday, April 20th, chopped around on Friday, and we're just kind of bouncing a little bit, maybe potentially – uh, back to that area. We're only about 20 points below there. Now, I'm going to take that area off this chart for a moment, and I'm going to get a little shorter time frame and take a look at the trend line that we had going to lower prices. Now, we just broke through that area, right? You were lower, and that area would put us at about 41.50. We're trading at 41.61 right now. We made it to 41.98, and you see how nicely last week matched up. That was Tuesday. We got the first confirmation on Wednesday. Thursday, it's right where it hit, man right before you got a real sell-off in the markets to the tune of about almost 1% on that market from 41.70 down to a price point below 41.40. We're trading right now at 41.61. So keep your eye on that because it is interesting on the longer-term perspective, both of those. And I was saying this last week, but if you didn't catch it, you go back to where we were when the Fed began hiking and we're right where we were at that time which is just remarkable that we've gone through what we've gone through. Inflation is still kind of raging. We got bank tightening going on, which is going to put a clamp on the economy as well. And the market is right where we were now for what it's worth. Okay. Jumping around to what else we have going on, staying on treasuries, right? Treasuries, all the rage, rightfully so. 
Now, this one was out last week. I just wanted to reference it, okay? This is April 18th. But if you take a look in terms of what we were talking about and talking about this as well, this is talking about J.P. Morgan's Treasury client, net neutral positions, lower in September, and they talk about the funds that we were just talking about, right? Leveraged funds, net short in the 10-year Treasury futures built. So there's a lot of shorts going on in the Treasury market, which would be pointing to higher yields, which could be pointing to sticky inflation and a sticky Fed to go along with it. And listen, if you listen to our conversation to Teddy Cakes that last Wednesday, folks, he's looking for some cuts, man. And it's not outlandish to think that that could occur because there's going to be a lot of data. We get a Fed decision a week from Wednesday, May 3rd, okay? But the meeting after that is in the middle or late June, I think. And it's about six weeks in between meetings is what they do. So we're going to get the May meeting. They're probably going to hike one more time. We'll see if they really say something strong about pausing. The only thing I'll caution you is that there's no way the Fed is going to say anything next Wednesday when they are going to get two full months of data prior to the next meeting. All they're going to say is we're going to see where the data goes. They might give you a glimpse of where it's been going and that they might be looking at, for a confirmation of that data. But that's what's going to move everything. We're going to get Apple earnings the day after they announce. We're going to get a lot of tech company earnings this week that will drive things. Okay, But they are going to get all of April's data, which they're not going to have when they do things May 3rd. Okay, They're going to have some of it, but not all of it in terms of when it comes out. So they're going to have all of April data, and they're also going to have all of May data, which will be out in the market before they have their next meeting in June. So it's going to be data, man. It's going to be two months of data between the May and the June, and that's going to drive things. And there is a lot to do for work for getting inflation under control, which is why I think you're seeing a lot of money line up for the fact that pressure could be sticky there for inflation across the board. All right, what else we got? Talking about banks, right? A couple stories out here for Credit Suisse and UBS. Credit Suisse, I saw one number, $200 billion. $69 billion in outflows before UBS takeover. Writing was on the wall, man. It was gone. Yeah, here you go. They lost more than 200 billion francs of customer deposits over a six-month period. Okay. And then they had 70 billion in the first quarter. It took a large write-down at its wealth management unit and underscored uh, the challenge for UBS in retaining key clients and assets after the emergency takeover of its biggest rival. The money was running, and so what were they taking over? Which is probably why they got it for basically nothing in terms of the book value of what Credit Suisse was valued at. And then you have UBS risk officer gonna stay in the role in U-turn after takeover. They were departing, but it seems like uh, the risk offer is gonna be, officer is gonna be a crucial one here. And they're going to remain in the role for six months to stay there. His appointed successor will now head risk control activities related to the integration of Credit Suisse Group. And he had stepped down, but they're going to keep him on there. I mean, folks, I have one of my best friends works in Switzerland, and he works for UBS, fortunately so. We've talked to him on the air before. Uh, very fortunate, of course, he works for UBS versus Credit Suisse. He was over there working for J.P. Morgan originally. Uh, he's from New York. I went to Villanova with him. He got a job working for J.P. Morgan in the city, got the opportunity to move over to Geneva to work for J.P. Morgan, went from Geneva then to Zurich, lives in Zurich now, has a daughter that's going to be one coming up uh, her birthday, Cinco de Mayo. Not bad. Uh, but he talks about, to get to the point, that there is a huge, huge cultural need to make sure that they protect this bank because the black mark on their banking, which defines so much of what Switzerland is in terms of the economy, what it drives, is very real. And so you can see that it is something that people are stepping up to make sure, I think, that they get this job done because they had two banks and now they have one. And if you've got any problems at their bank, what happened if they got no bank? Switzerland, right? Could you imagine? All they have is UBS now. So in terms of a national pride issue and almost a national preservation issue, I think you're going to see that step up because him being there, 
And this was not even an ecstatic deal at all when he was working for UBS. Probably a good thing for their company overall in terms of if they write this ship, the assets they got, the value that they got them at, they would be in a position of greater strength. But overall, the black mark on their banking sector because Credit Suisse going under when it defines so much of what they do is a tough one that is that is a danger going forward. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TN. FNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets in positive territory. S&P's up by five right now. Keep your eye on that 41.79 mark. That's kind of where the chart rests in terms of putting this back here. Let's put it on a daily. Okay. And I know we're coming into the end of the program here. But you're looking at an area that rested about 41.80 on my charts. That's an area of resistance right now, but also on a shorter term basis, man. Maybe we've seen the last of that area. Maybe we get up here one more time in terms of almost at Wednesday's high. But we had a channel line last week. You can't deny we've broken out of that channel line this week, man. And as I mentioned, Microsoft and Google tomorrow, Meta on Wednesday, Amazon, Intel, Snapchat on Thursday, Fed decision a week from this Wednesday, and Apple earnings May 4th, along with many other companies mixed in there. What else is in there? The debt limit. Keep your eye on it, man, because it's going to be there. This is going to be a fight, and you're seeing it already with Kevin McCarthy. 
Now, they're going to put forward a plan that has no chance whatsoever of going forward, and they can't even get that passed because things are so tight in terms of what they want. And this plan that they're putting out puts, you know, pulls back everything that was done. A lot of it was done by Biden in terms of $80 billion for the IRS. It pulls back. That one I don't get, folks. Somehow it gets political. Uh, nobody likes paying taxes. But the IRS needs money to collect money. That's how it works. I mean, there's a lot of times that people say fix the tax code, fix the loopholes, right? How do you fix the loopholes? You need people to be able to police those loopholes, most of which is for people making well over the median income in this country. It also rolls back energy and climate tax credits, health care legislation. So it's not going to even be close. And even that, that they can't get passed. It's a dire warning for how things are going to come. And the other part I don't understand about that, okay, because you better believe this is economic and what would happen if we start defaulting. When you go into a negotiation, right, you have to know what's your strength? Where are you willing to go? How are you able to put pressure on the other side to say, no, I won't take that deal. I need this deal. Neither side should ever say my strength comes from pushing a possible default, folks. Shouldn't happen, okay? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for starting your week. We got higher prices, but the day is young, folks. Basil Chapman's coming up next. Don't forget about his webinar, folks, a week from Wednesday. He'll talk about it coming up. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil.